Mumineen, we are continuing Surah Kahf. And the verse we recited is verse number 45. And the translation goes like that. And coin for them the similitude of the life of the world is water which we send down from the sky. And the plants of earth mingle with it and then become dry twigs that the wind scatter. And Allah is omnipotent over everything. Allah is giving the example of this life that how transient this life is is just like water which falls down from the heaven and is rain water and then mixed with the plants and you know everything becomes beautiful and what not and then uh, then what happens then all these green uh, and all these things becomes dry and get scattered in the wind you know that's how our life is and Allah is omnipotent over everything we get attached to this world Allah the example of this world how water falls down and how it mixed with the green vegetations and how the green vegetation becomes like dry and scatters around everywhere that's how the world is we get attached to this worldly things and material world so much and we think that it's going to stay forever but it's all going to be finished uh, you know our life will be finished our youth will be finished our money will be finished because we'll be going to graves and our children will leave us you know that's how this world is but but we get attached so much to this world Al-Malul wa Banunu Zeenatul Hayati Dunya Wal Baqiyati Salihati Khairun Ainda Rabbika Fawabam wa Khairun Amala. Wealth and children are the ornaments of the life of the world and the everlasting good works are better with you. Your Lord is in the reward and better in expectation. Children and money is all the ornament of this life just like a lucky example of vegetation. And we expect so much from our money and children and most of the time you see that you get not that kind of reward from them. A lot of time you see even betrayal from the people even your children. But Allah says that you you get betrayal from this world, but what about your good deeds? Allah says everlasting good works are better with your Lord in the reward and better in expectation. Why your expression better? Because Allah is so merciful. Allah is so forgiving. So whatever you do, little deeds, inshallah, Allah is going to give you great reward. Because He's so kind and merciful. He's, he's Wahab. He, he bestows things. So you can expect a lot from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what you are getting attached to, these worldly things are mostly you see betrayals, you know. Uh, so there is uh, in the tafasir, uh, ex is explain what is the meaning of uh, everlasting good works. Everlasting good works is tasbir arba. Uh, uh, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Akbar. These these four hymns which we read always in the third and fourth rakat. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah Akbar. It is that's if you recite that, it's going to give you, it's going to stay with you as a great good deed. Then Elijah said, not only this, but your prayer itself would be a great good deed for you to get better reward from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Then uh, next thing is Allah, as uh, Elijah says, that loving Elijah is a great reward which is Allah has said for you. And another one, what Elijah said is the uh, uh, namaz shab. <laughs> nightly prayer is a great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for the believers now Allah is describing the judgment day wa yoma wa yoma nusiyurul jibalu wa taral arda barizatan wa hasharnahum falam nuqadir minhum ahada and the day we shall set the mountains in motion and you will see the earth is level plain and we muster them nor shall we leave out any of them all these big mountains are seeing Allah is going to give them motion and they will be scattered like cotton balls and the whole uh, earth will become a plain a straight plain and you will not see anything but just plain earth and Allah will not leave anybody but to come to that ground Ya Allah, we should remember this day. This is a scary day for all of us because we will be, be there and there, there won't be any meditation or anything. And we will be all collected in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأُرِيدُوا عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ الصَّفَّةَ لَقَدْ جِتْتُمُونَا كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَةٍ بَوْزْعَانْتُمْ 
أن لن جعل لكم موعدا Now in the next verse Allah is talking about judgment again How Allah will collect us in the rows أُرِدُوا عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ صَفَّا لَقَ جِتْتُمُونَا كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّتِمْ بَوْزَعَانْتُمْ لَنْ نَجْعَلَ لَكُمْ مَوْعِدَا And they shall be presented before your Lord in ranks. You will, you have to come to us as we created you upon the first time. But you thought that we should not appoint a tryst for you. Everybody will come to Allah as they were born first time alone. And everybody will come back to Allah just like first time with no relationship left but with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everybody will be in the row, in the ranks. In the row. Uh, but you, Allah said, but you thought that Allah has not created any moment for you to be like that. You forgot that you will be collected in front of us. You thought it will not happen. But it's going to happen. It's for all the human beings. That everybody will be in ground and everybody is standing in the row in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How scary it is. Al Anbar says there will be 120,000 ranks on the judgment day. 40,000 ranks would be from the previous nations, and 80,000 ranks would be for our prophet nation because our prophet nation will be so big till the day of judgment. And Adul Imani says in his tafsir the ranks would be also based on your belief and your deeds. What kind of belief and deeds you had of you all the ranks, you know, insha. So we should be always remember the day of judgment when we will be standing in the line in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the next verse describe even more in detail about the judgment day Ya Mullah Pabudhi al-kitab Fatara al-mujrimina mushfiqina mimma fihi yaqulu ya wa ilatana mali mali Haza al-kitab لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحساء ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يزلم ربك أحدا. In the book is placed and you see the guilty fearful at what is it in in saying alas for us what a book is this that it leaves out nothing small or great but it has been numbered it. And they will find all that they did confronting them. And your Lord does not treat anyone with injustice. <laughs> the book will be open. And guilty one, we are also guilty one. <laughs> but it, it's mostly for polytheists, but also we, we are part of it. We are also guilty one. We will see in our book. That nothing is left, small or big, whatever we did. And but especially it is for the non-believers. And they'll be afraid of that what will be there. And they'll be saying, Ya <laughs> What is the meaning of veil? What is the meaning of veil? Veil means death. We wish we were dead before we see that. Because they thought that when we die, things will be finish but death would be easy but seeing this would be hard because in jahannam and jannah there is no death ya wailatana mali hazal kitab what kind of book is this la yugadiru sagiratan wala kabir nothing is left small or big illa asaha it has been included wa wajadu ma amilu hadira and they will find their deeds there wala yazlumu rabbuka ahada then allah shows his beauty that i am not going to zulm to anybody we will be doing some to ourselves. This is the miracle of Quran that Allah never gets angry. Allah just says that I am the just God. When you will be open our books, Allah, you will tell us that, that I am not going to go to some to you. We are done some to ourselves. La la indi kuntumala zalameen. Ya Allah. <laughs> so this book you know there are a lot of commentary about the deed book here in this verse Allah, this, Allah talks about one deed book for the whole human being there are verses in the Quran which talk about deed book for every person individual deed book and there are some verses of the Quran which says that there will be deed book for each nation everything is impossible because Allah is you know 
In today's world, you see how easy chips to include everything, you know. And what a what Imam Jafar says, says about that? Imam says there will not be single moment, word, moment of the food or anything he does not, he has done which is not mentioned as if it is done very instant. Everything when we see it, we'll feel it. Every motion, every word, what we did just now. Because we will say, Allah, we, we forgot all we did and that's how it will be. Adul Imani says, Adul Imani says that, that our deeds are like energy and the energy does not get destroyed. So, so this energy will come back on a judgment and, and the deeds will take shape. If you did good deeds, they will come in a good shape. If you did wrong deeds, they will come in an evil shape. That's how it will be. Now next in verse, Allah talk about our enemy, Shaitan. That why we do all this zulm on ourselves. And when we say to angels prostrate to Adam, so they prostrated except Iblis. He was of the jinn and he rebelled against his Lord's command. Will you then choose him and his seed as your protecting friends instead of me? When they are enemies to you, evil would be the exchange for the unjust. Allah is talking about that when Allah called angels to prostrate to Adam, everybody prostrated except Iblis who was a jinn. Allah put him in high rank because he was doing so much worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tested him and he failed because he had so much arrogance in him. So Allah says he is your, he, he rebelled against Allah, Allah said. Huh? Fasaka an amri rabbi. He rebelled against Allah subhanahu So you take him and his seed as your protecting friend instead of me, Allah says. Although they are your enemy. And evil would be the exchange for the unjust. What you are exchanging. Allah wanted him to, to, to take Allah as a guardian and a protector. But... Allah says that you leave me alone and you take your enemy as your guardian. Big for Zalim in a badla. For Zalim in what a bad exchange. Because you follow him. Why do you follow him? You think that. You know all these mushrikeen, when they leave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take help from others in the form of help. Not like intercession. Don't take me wrong. Intercession is allowed in Quran from Holy Allah. Who are Holy Allah? Prophets, martyrs, Imams. They are Holy Allah. You can take their intercession. That's different with Allah as well. But if you worship them as junior God, that they're going to help you. This is Shaitan, you know. Now, you know, like politicians in the time of Prophet, they used to worship angels as Allah's daughter. So they, they did shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, and they, they worship Jinnat directly. People worship Shaitan directly. They think that they are going to help in the worldly deeds. That's how they think they are holy, yeah, that they are going to help you. You know, like you go to India, you see a lot of sun god, uh, moon god, whatever. They think that these gods are going to help to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is shirk. So the, you, they are like shaitan who you take an olia helping you in worldly matters. Ma ashatum khalqa samawati al ardi wala khalqa khalqa anfusihim wa ma kuntu muttakhizil mudallilin mudallina aduda. I did not make them to witness the creation of the heavens and the earth, nor of the creation of their self, nor choose I misleader for helpers. SubhanAllah Allah says that uh, what you are worshipping, the Iblis and his progeny, I did not make him, them witness when I was creating universe, nor I make them witness when I was creating them. 
I do not choose my helper who are misleaders. Who are misleaders. So they have no knowledge. All this you are thinking, they are great. They, the shaitans, they have no ilm. They have no knowledge because they were not there when the universe was created. And they had no knowledge of the, even their creation. And this, you know, we should say, Nara Hedri Yali, right? We hear always, right? Nara Hedri Yali, when we hear about Khaybar Khandak, right? We should do Nara Hedri Yali when you read Quranic verses. Okay? Now, this verse. Vama kuntu mutakhidil mudadilina adada. Right? This verse. Now, I choose I, nor choose I misleader for helper, right? That I don't choose my misleader as helper, right? Nara Hedri Ya Ali. Jab, uh, when people say to Mula Mutakiyan that why don't you do some compromise with Amir Sham, he read this verse. Nara Hedri Ya Ali. He read this verse that nor choose I misleader for my helpers. Nara Hedri Ya Ali. See, that was the vision of our Elabeth, how they used to see Quran. Pinpoint. Pinpoint from Tawheed. Nara Hedri Ya Ali. I'm not saying that you should not say Nara Hedri when you hear Khaydar Khandak. That's good. That's one level. But this is a higher level. Mola ex expect us to be on higher level. Mola Mutakayan say, your tomorrow should be always better than today. Mola said when he was passing away, they remember nobody should take precedence over you in Quran. Nobody should take precedence over you in Quran. Ayoma Yakulu Nadu Shurka il Ladina Zantum Fad Ahum Falam Yes, the Jibu Lahum, Waja Allah, Bainahum, Mobika. And the day when we say, Call on those whom you consider to my partners, so they shall call on them, and but they will not answer them. And we will cause between them a valley of perdition. Perdition means destruction. Whosoever you call besides Allah, as you made him associate, Allah said, Call them today. And they will not any, hear any answer. And Allah says that Allah will make a valley of perdition, valley of destruction between them and those who you are calling. If you are calling shaitan, they will be anyway finished. But if you are calling some uh, uh, angels, are you calling prophets as God's partner, they won't answer you. And there will be destruction. They will not be destroyed because they are Allah's respected one. The link would be destroyed between you and them. You will have no link left. They, they, will, they will dissociate. There are a lot of us in the Quran about it. They will say, we didn't know you. We didn't tell you to do this. They will just say, we have nothing to do with you. You will be done with that. And you will left to Allah SWT. Ya Allah. Mujrimuna naro fadhannu annahu muwaqiquha walam yajidu anha masrifa. And the evildoers will see the fire. Then apprehend that they are falling into it. And we'll find no escape from it. Ya Allah, the evil doer will see Jahannam, the fire, and they'll know that they cannot get rid of it. So there is a hadith from Prophet Sallallahu that on the judgment day, which Quran says very clearly, judgment day would be of 50,000 years. Prophet says that unbeliever will stand there. Allah will keep him stand there for 50,000 years on his foot. And then he will start seeing the hell. Because uh, hell will be presented at judgment day and paradise will be presented at judgment day, right? So when they will see hell judge, on judgment day, it will take 40 years for hell to come down and they go inside it. Ya Allah. We should never think for a blink of a moment that, that we can be escaped from the hell fire. You know, because we are also guilty ones. We are all guilty. We are not masumin, you know. We should be fearful of hellfire. If we are not fearful of hellfire, say, oh no, I cannot be going to hellfire, hellfire because I'm a believer. Then that means that that means that you not pursued the religion. Nobody is free from Allah's fire. Unless Allah decided the judgment day, where you will go? Nobody knows. Only Maliki Omidhi knows where will he will go. How will he perish? Or if he will live alone, or he will put in paradise, only it's up to him. We don't know anything. Nobody knows, but Allah knows where he will go. 
we pray to Allah through the Vasila al Behet. Oh Allah, for your sins, we cannot enter paradise unless there is your mercy. Your mercy, Allah, with the du'as of al Behet, then you forgive our great sins and enter the paradise. We will not go to paradise just with our deeds. Prophet said himself that I will not go to paradise with just by my deeds. Allah with his mercy will put me in paradise. So this is Prophet, who are we? We do read dua where Allah says that oh, oh Allah, if you send me the hellfire, I'll cry. I'll cry. Yeah, Allah. Now in the next verse, Allah is saying, وَلَقَدْ صَرَفْنَا فِي هَذِي الْقُرْآنِ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلْ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْسَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا Allah is explaining why why people are like that and indeed we have explained in the Quran every kind of similitude for mankind but man of the most thing is contentious Allah says that I have explained all kind of examples in the Quran but the man not the believer is contentious means he argues he argues because Allah says Quran with all kind of examples but still the man when he reads is he is fighting with Allah because when he reads Quran he doesn't want to take any lesson he is arrogant he loves this world he is clinging to this world so whenever he sees anything he just starts arguing about why Allah says this why Allah said that you know you see that the, these the science students who are the young guys who become atheists when they read Quran they say we read Quran but why this is in Quran and why that is in Quran they'll keep arguing because why because they're arrogant they're arrogant they see that the world is with them and they live here forever and they, uh, they, they, they they are not humble and they don't want to le- take lesson if you don't want to take lesson from Quran if you are arrogant Allah will not guide you Allah said this Quran is a muttaqeen. If you are muttaqi, I will guide you. If you are not muttaqi, I will not guide you. You will always keep arguing with me. Allah guides only to muttaqeen this Quran. Same thing Allah says about Torah. That uh, uh, I said Torah uh, to Moses and, uh, and Harun and uh, say that it was for muttaqeen Allah says for Torah also. Torah is all who suffer muttaqeen. It's not for the who are the uh, arrogant one and they want to read the book just to, to see and uh, find some faults and uh, fight about it. Allah says, okay, if you find fault with me, which I have no fault, fault is in you, I'll misguide you. You just keep arguing. And, and then what Allah says, what will happen in the end? Allah says about it. And not prevented men from believing when the guidance came unto them and seeking their Lord's forgiveness. Allah says, not prevented, not prevented men from believing when the guidance came unto them and seeking their Lord's forgiveness. What prevented? human being to accept faith and ask astaghfar Allah saying what? Except that the want of the ancients should come upon them or that the chastisement should come face to face with them. They said that we will not accept you, we will not have faith, we will not do toba unless what happened to the previous generation that means they want to say, see same chastisement surrounding them was surrounded the previous one and are see eye to eye the chastisement. You know, today's so-called sophisticated people, sophisticated hypocritic Muslims who loves money and just fame and deep down they have no sense of the judgment verses which we read and they just love this world and other people who are so-called intellectual, they they are all arrogant just like the people of the Lut and the pe- people of uh, Adam, and pe- people of No, who always said to the prophets that we will not believe the Lord unless you bring the chastisement of the ancient time or we see eye to eye. Same thing is today because they are all arrogant and they think that they think that everything is around them. They don't see the judgment day. They don't see Allah. So Allah will not guide unless you are muttaqiyah, unless you are pious. So Allah leaves them alone. That is the thing that we should do astaghfar. So Allah, Allah make our heart humble. And same thing happened to Imam.
Hussain alayhi salam on the 10th of Muharram in Karbala. He came as a guide as a speaking Quran. He came and he taught them the religion of his grandfather. He, he, he was an inheritor of prophets just like Prophet Adam. He was an inheritor of Prophet Adam, inheritor of Prophet Ibrahim and Musa and Isa. Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam as an inheritor, as a guide and he was asking people to believe in him, believe in the Islam of his, his grandfather Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and they kept denying him they kept denying him with the same ideology that we will not believe you unless we see Allah with our own eyes Alhamdulillah